What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Ooze back again, once again, with another episode of the Full Power Podcast, the the latest and greatest uh, Dragon Ball focused podcast. But you know, we're we're all about just as the title says, we're full power. So we're, you know, sometimes we get a little out of control. We might you know talk about a few other things, which we might end up doing on this very episode. So if there is any other anime or related anime manga whatever you might want to hear us talk a little bit about let us know because now uh we actually finally have a a email you guys can actually write in for any potential topic discussions ideas concerns that you might have if you're listening via spotify apple whatever um so it's not just all through the YouTube comments, which is, you know, obviously something that we highly encourage you guys to take advantage of. So that way y'all have direct contact with Kai and myself. But speaking of Kai, what's up, Kai? How you doing today? I'm good. I'm chilling. I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to get this rolling because we already, we left it off heavy with those predictions last time. Indeed we did. Yes. Yeah. Last, last week's episode was a dope one as, as they usually are. And it was it was definitely heavy, like you said, because you know, full power podcast what was that episode twenty two? Damn, twenty two episodes later, and we finally have some other things to talk about in in regards to a new movie. Last week we were discussing potential, uh, you know scenarios, I suppose, or exactly what could go down with the little. Uh, though that we know about this movie so definitely check that episode out if you uh, haven't already but I mean we're pretty much gonna reference back to a lot of certain things because kind of what I wanted to bring up on this episode um, was just to further confirm for us and for you know all of our listeners here that we're, we're not very far off on anything that we were initially thinking and you know the big question of course like where and when does this movie take place and of course i'm referring to dragon ball super 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 superhero (laughs) um that would be where does movie take place where you know and and of course the answer to that is well let's let's look at any of the small clues that we do have and look at pan pan's kindergarten outfit is a clear indicator and so i actually just recently watched one of geekdom's new videos and he was essentially saying a lot of the same stuff that we were already saying so it's good to know that you know we're not the only ones that are on the same wavelength when it comes down to all of those ideas I mean, it does make sense. It kind of just, you know, it, it just, you know, just going off of her design and knowing that she is in, that is her kindergarten outfit at that point in time, you know, only one can, uh, you know, imagine that this is definitely going to happen around that end of Z section of Dragon Ball Z, which is it's very good. Because, you know, there's only so many times that we can literally repeat ourselves by saying, like, we we need to get out of this 10-year gap. Because we're already in retcon territory, uh, plot hole territory, however way you want to call it. But, yeah, that's... It wouldn't be a true Dragon Ball storyline without a plot hole. <laughs> I guess. It would be it nice wouldn't. to not have them, though. <laughs> You're asking too much. <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. Uh, well, speaking of asking, though, um, there are some, there are some, uh, uh, there are a few related questions that we do have. Normally, we save this for the end, but we're changing it up a little bit for today's episode. Um, so we have a question here, and it says that uh, they would like for us to discuss a little bit more about the animation for this movie. Um, and I guess, let's see, this says, discuss a bit more of the animation for this movie. And yes, the, uh, the teaser trailer was only an intro, not the style they will you be 
uh, using, they showed us uh, Goku different technologies. Okay, well, rough translation of that uh, question. Um, I guess more or less they just want our thoughts on how exactly um, the animation might end up going. So do you do you wanna do you wanna give yours first? Um, I mean, this is all my personal opinion. I don't really, you know, I don't have any facts on any of that stuff. But I feel like they will throw some CGI into it, no doubt. But I think it's still mostly gonna be, you know, the the way we've normally seen it. You know, just drawn up. Yeah, I I I think if we're gonna if we're gonna if we're gonna uh, take any reference or make any reference to how they've been doing any of the recent dragon ball films at least like within the last however many years since battle of god six came years out. yeah like they, they've they've literally been experimenting with cgi well yeah like yeah, it's yeah. cgi right yeah pretty sure yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah since battle of gods too right so ever since battle of gods they have been uh really trying at you know featuring certain parts of the films with cgi so maybe this movie will kind of use a, a little more possibly and the only reason why i would say that is because the you know the teaser trailer with goku doing his usual hop skip is <laughs> you know is showing that off so like what you said i whew, I, I really would not expect them to just do the whole movie full blown like that i feel like they will have a lot of both and like i like i'm saying they'll, they'll most likely have certain parts where it'll definitely be in that cg state and who knows maybe they might save the fighting scenes for you know to do that which i'm not sure exactly how well that will translate for a show like dragon ball just because you know even though in movies they've had certain scenes like i said that have shown off the you know the cg techniques and whatnot that would you know those those were never like the focal point you know uh, sections or like you know the majority of the movie was animated in in a 2d style yeah. so i just think that if they were to really try to go off the deep end and really like go like full on half and half, I, I, I feel like that might be a little too conflicting for fans. Not going to lie. You're definitely right about that. A lot of I feel like the majority of people would not like that type of change. They're definitely not ready for it. They're trying to slip it in there. And, you know, especially with this teaser. But um, yeah. I just feel like I feel like they won't. I don't know. They've been they've been working on it for a while, so I feel like they won't overdo it. You know what I mean? I yeah, I really hope so. Like I I hope I hope the, there there's a there's a fine balance and by balance I mean like they just don't have random scenes that really don't need the CGI. You know, and they and they and they and they go through with it. Like I I hope that the the balance is like majority of the movie is how we would expect it to look and then only specific set scenes would feature that kind of style you know because again you know cgi isn't necessarily a bad thing but you know it just comes down to how people take things or how they want to you know understand or i don't it's more like a, of an acceptance thing really like what we're used to I mean, you do something for, you know, 30 years and then you start trying to change it up outside of, you know, like the usual graphical enhancements. Like this is not a graphical enhancement. This is a, this is a whole nother technique style. It's like, imagine seeing, I don't know, like your favorite cartoon, your favorite anime, you know, being done in a certain way, being produced in a set way. And the next thing you know, uh the the next part is live action berserk or you know what i'm saying like and that's a very dramatic change not to say that it's good or bad but the, you know 
it's the it's the dramatic change part that you know i'm really trying to drive home here and, and you know we we're we're critical you know like we 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 see something and we basically like try to really understand exactly why it is the way that it is with reasoning with you know reference to anything that we may have seen this kind of happening other types of patterns you know and not a lot of people are like that um another example that i have is uh i don't think you've watched berserk but i just i to... just mentioned it earlier oh you did yeah i said when you said uh if it's uh one way versus another i was like yeah berserk Oh, I see. I didn't even hear you. <laughs> I didn't even. You, it, it, it was probably uh, a. <laughs> yeah, you like you definitely slept. You you slept that one right in there. I, I uh, had no idea. <laughs> I got my headphones in blaring. So I was but like, nah, no you def- way. You definitely right though. That that shit happened in Berserk, and it was unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, my God. You don't even know, man. That's a and that's a shame for for a show like that. I mean, you want to talk about iconic. You want to talk about, you know one of the the pillars of a genre of manga that has seen so much inspiration taken from that you know to the modern day like today you know shout outs and rest in peace to kentaro miura unfortunately for those that don't know uh the creator of berserk recently passed and his work right is so intricate so special so unique that it was actually revealed, um, you know, the way he he does his artwork was that he was so finite with the detail that he his editors would actually, you know, tell him like, hey, like, you don't have to go so OD detail in it because, you know, by the time we try to print this, a lot of that detail goes missing because that's how detailed he was. Like, just imagine that. Like, and we see a lot of artwork from manga nowadays, and we think, damn, this John looks fire, right? And then to just to know that Mans was so detailed that the printing couldn't even pick that up. Like, and that, and that's, that's insane. And so I bring all this up because Berserk never truly got a, a honorable and truthful adaptation the closest thing that they it has is the original 1997 anime where it does it has a lot of that old school technique of course it's a lot of 2d there's def there is not a single drop of 3d or cgi or anything like that they actually have a lot of uh illustration stills like very very classic 90s anime techniques and years later, they 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 go about the the whole uh, golden age arc, which was like a three. They divided into three movies for Netflix, um, and it's all CG, like all of it, right? Now, granted, it's not terrible, but it still wasn't a style that could really capture and adapt. The original artwork the way that it was you know meant to be received and you know appreciated and so then you fast forward time even more and you've got a a, a, a disgraceful adaptation that and it's not even you know it's not about oh like it's better than nothing no no no, no. like you have a show like that that deserves the most the most budget the most respect the most attention to detail and care and yet they decided that they were going to basically just use its name to get any sort of popularity or just attention you know people to just watch it and to obviously you know turn a profit and they thought that they could just get away with, oh yeah, let's just do, let's just hire a studio that never does, you know, this dark fantasy, high action type of series. They don't do that. They do like, you know, slice of life, com- comedy type anime where the animation doesn't really matter all that much. 
and here you go here's here's your two seasons worth of berserk and it, it it and no one liked it not a single person and because and it was worse than what the movies looked like on the netflix version so by the huh. time these johns came out like season one was done everyone's like okay they need to switch studios they need to not hire these people again because it was bad and what's crazy and of course i know I, i've been talking a lot about berserk but you know here here's here, here's the uh, the actual point is that they were switching on and off randomly between the cgi and the 2d and the funny part is every single time they had those 2d scenes people were literally like why didn't they just do it like this why didn't they just leave it like that you know and it's a very valid question consider you know when you take into consideration how terrible the rest of it looked i'm not saying that Dragon Ball super 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 hero is gonna look like that <laughs> but you know I'm just I, I I the only thing that I do want to say is that I I definitely fear the reception of you know how how fans alike will take the film once it drops and you know because pe you know the casual fans especially are super critical of stuff like this because next thing you know, Jimmy, you know, that goes with Timmy to watch the freaking movie in the theaters, <laughs> they see these scenes and they don't like them and they look bad. Next thing you know, they tell their boy Sean and Jessica and Karen to, hey, oh, this not movie Karen. is not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, 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 they tell that girl too. They tell him, hey, this movie was trash. Animation was terrible. Just because of the few scenes that they, they may have used CGI. And tell me I'm wrong. Because I wish that I could. Is, that is exactly how a lot of casual fans are. They, they take one little example of anything. And they will oversaturate it and over-dramatize it to be something that it actually isn't and in their case they'll make it sound a lot worse or that it was bad and ignore everything else that may have been good about it and then there's that other fear of it actually ending up the whole thing looking like how the teaser and trailer looked which that would be super concerning considering that like we said in the last episode it looked very flat it you know it, it looked not complete really it just looked like you know how you would do like a tease it looked like you know a ps3 game was being developed so so anyway um so yeah so those are our thoughts on the animation topic there so hopefully yeah, I that mean, was i uh, got I got I got nothing because everything you say about Berserk is really what I was thinking about this when I saw that teaser come out because you know mm. CGI tends not to do so well in the anime scene but you can make it work if you slip it in just the right way you know what I mean but pause but at the same <laughs> time it's just it's a risky move yeah it is like I honestly feel like the only time it it could ever be like okay is if the the series itself was always like that and there are exactly. some that are you know you know it, it just has goes to back start to that way thing. if you're if you're able to start it like that then keep it going and it's fine but if you switch it up back and forth especially done right So let's see here. Let's see another question. Fan of the the oob pitch. Okay, very good. That's good. I'm, I mean, listen. I'm telling you, oob is gonna definitely be in this movie. There's no. I I'm very confident that he's definitely gonna be in there. Nah, I think it's too good. It's too good to be true. 
So yeah, so, okay, so the rest of this question instead says, uh, you can give your plot predictions and how it leads to the future of the anime. Uh, how these moral granola arcs lead into the movie. That's not a bad question. So what do you think, Kai? I don't think it's going to. I think there's a time skip for a reason. They're just going to leave another hole there. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's going to lead into it at all. I think the the quote unquote lead that people may or may not be looking for is the fact that Oob lifted his hand and donated some energy. That's your hint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think kind of similar to what you're saying, as far as it leading in, uh, you know, at least from the granola arc into this film, I, I honestly feel like it's just gonna be very Dragon Ball. And by what I, what I mean by that is, if you notice, okay, like within every arc, that has ever happened there usually isn't like a transitional phase it's like it there's a, there's there's a beginning middle end and then that's it and then there's like time passes and then something else happens right yeah something completely new completely unrelated it doesn't dial back to the past like the only time we ever saw an arc tie in with something previous was like frieza just cuz he had backstory and that that that's a stretch yeah right so I, I, you know, I feel like however way this granola arc is going to end, whether granola sides with the Saiyans and he realizes that Goku and Vegeta are all right, or he ends up dead, the however way this ends, I feel like it'll have its ending and then there will be some more time that will pass and then boom, we'll have, you know, the events of the movie if that's how they're planning it um as far as like predictions and how it leads to the future of the anime well i would hope right that this movie you know is obviously happening right and then w at either around the release date of the film or shortly thereafter they have plans to also bring the anime back to regular weekly television because um, it wouldn't be the first time we would see something similar happen where if you guys think back and remember um, remember when Super itself got announced, right? Resurrection F was revealed to be happening the following year and right before that film was about to drop they made the announcement that the anime was also returning so they had a bunch of shuffling around to do at toei um they delayed i, I think they delayed digimon i think it that's what happened i or some i don't know it was some anime got pushed to another time slot or I forget exactly those details, but in relation to this movie, I feel like they will, they, or well, at least they should, that that would be definitely be a nice, you know, little surprise would be like, Hey, we know that Dragon Ball super, 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 super heroes coming out, but the anime is coming back too. And I feel like if they were super smart about it or super, super, super smart, I should say, uh they would you know of course at this point the release date of the film itself would be out there and then they would also you know announce that the anime is going to have a specific date as well which like it would be crazy if they decided like let's say the movie came out at the beginning of the month and then the anime was about to return like a week or two after the fact it would almost kind of guarantee or kind of force fans to go and wa make sure they watch it because you know they're not trying to get spoiled on anything that could have happened out of the movie into you know the next you know brand new episode of dragon ball super however that probably won't happen now that i think about it just off the fact that that would only work if they had a global worldwide release simultaneously and 
I it's believed that that is actually not going to happen. I feel like Japan's going to get it first, like always, and then other countries are going to get it after the fact. Yeah. I mean, that's usually so. how it goes, so that's not out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty standard at this rate. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of... That's kind of really it. I, it's, uh, that is all that I can really say for, I mean, for any, 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 any kind of predictions. I mean, if we were, if, so if what I said is to actually happen, right? Let's say like I have some wild ass crystal ball and I literally just predicted the entire layout of how this movie and timeline of when the anime is going to return, uh, actually happens. Um, I would definitely expect that when they do come back, there should be no reason why um, Oob is not fully involved at that point. Because I, I, I really feel like this film is, is essentially going to be the end of Z. It's going to, it's either it's going to be, even if it starts before that tournament, I feel like that tournament's still going to take place in that film. That would be dope. Yeah. Because. I, I I really think that after the granola arc, like this this arc has to be like the last one. Like unless they decide that they want to go back and do another story from another character's perspective, and it doesn't really hurt the flow of how things are supposed to go within the timeline, then sure, why not? I don't really care, because you know. We found out later after the fact that Goten and Trunks again were uh, having scuffles with Cell Juniors on 17's like Animal Island or whatever. And, you know, not for anything, but we've definitely said that we would love it if Dragon Ball actually turned their attention to other characters that are in the series. Just because, I mean, Goku and Vegeta, you know, they've been running the show for a while now. And it's kind of just been about them. So it would be pretty nice to kind of give them a rest and to give some kind of attention to the other, to, you know, any other character. Um, So yeah, I think I definitely think that this will definitely be on some end of Z type stuff, and hopefully the anime will essentially. You know who? You know, it's cool. the crazy part. Is, I just realized if that is to be the case, they might not. They they might actually change the name of the anime altogether. It might not even be called Dragon Ball Super anymore. It might be called. It might be called Dragon Ball Super Z. It might be called Dragon Ball Z Super. It might be called. Dragon Ball GTZ SSS. What? <laughs> I don't know. They they're definitely gonna change the name. I feel like because that would that would be a good way to uh you know to 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 really put the nail in the coffin. Like this is brand new territory. This is not within a ten year skip. This is you know this is post Z right now. I feel like that'd be the smartest thing to do. Considering that it would be very organized that way to have super acknowledged and known as this is the 10 year gap that took place within Z itself. But you know what? I feel like I don't want that. I don't want to see a name change because I feel like a name change solidifies the like Moro and Granola not getting animated and I would hate to I'd hate to see it. Well, okay, I see your point. Um, that is, I mean, that's that's a, that's, a, that's something that's great to bring up um, because I definitely would love to. I would love I would love to see all of that stuff get animated into the anime. Absolutely. But I feel like there is one there is one name that could be done that would actually. That would actually be um, okay. It would actually be acceptable if you're, they were to do a name change. You're talking about 
Dragon Ball a hyai. <laughs> they might as well, right? Um, <laughs> they so if like like and and I'm I'm pretty sure this would hype a lot of people up, and it's a very simple name change if you even want to call it a name change, right? All they'd have to do is once they announce that anime is returning, all they have to change it to is Dragon Ball Z. Done. Leave it as Z. And the reason why I say that is because even with looking at how Super has been or whatever, like all of that takes place literally within Dragon Ball Z. So by association, it is Dragon Ball Z. But it's so just, is Super. I don't know. I don't agree with that. Well, no, like that. Think of, think of it this way, right? So Dragon Ball is the over encompassing you know name of the entire franchise ip however you want to you know call that and so then by the time we get to you know gohan rad it's all them right then when it's you know officially dbz outside of japan because they didn't start calling the dbz until like that's just how it was known because originally it was all just it was still just called dragon ball and then the, when you know by the time the anime came out like yeah like that's that was where it really started to be known as dragon ball z um so now we have dragon ball z dragon ball z happens from you know raditz all the way until oob essentially oob the world tournament yeah and and so within that you have all of these arcs that were lost or maybe or i shouldn't say lost but that took place that we just never saw on screen because all of the stuff that we've been talking about watching reacting discussing you know all of it has been under the dragon ball super label but that itself is right is right is cushioned right in to Dragon Ball Z territory. Okay. So so like the only reason why like I mean that's not the only reason why because that is that reasoning if they were to decide to continue after Oob and call it and go back to calling, you know, the 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 whole thing Dragon Ball Z um I feel like that would also just really that would be a really a really good marketing strategy because let's face it hella people even now i mean there's the, you have ignorant fans that are still calling super dragon ball z and i'm and I, that i'll never understand it's like it's like you, they're ignoring to read what the hell is on their screen right and ignoring what they hear on on the last episode of dragon ball super or what you know like they just don't pay any mind to it they see it and understand it as dbz and honestly dbz rolls off the tongue a lot better than dbs no one even calls it that we just call it super right yep. <laughs> That's fact. so it, when you think of it like that that is my only like that that's that's my thought you know it's it's partially because all the events of super literally happen within the time you skip which there in turn is z by association and also because it would it, it it would just it would just i feel like it would just be like a really smart in a way power play marketing strategy to get you know everybody excited and on board like oh we're bringing the the, the name dragon ball z back or something like you know whatever but yeah. I, I i wouldn't be mad if if you didn't uh like agree with it yeah i just i don't think it's the best move but i understand where you're coming from with it but yeah because outside of that i mean they're, they're not calling it gt oh my god they're not calling it stop GT. how how messed up would it be if they called it they they straight up no acronyms right they just straight up called it dragon ball grand tour 
what the hell would you even <laughs> what would you what would you uh think about that i turn it off <laughs> i just straight turn it off uh that's funny they're gonna give broly super saiyan 4 yeah he already has it what do you mean he gonna perfect it yo hold on so okay you brought him up it reminded me of something else that uh <laughs> trigger i i yeah right so it was this was again also brought up on one of geekdom's videos and i was working out while i was listening to this and apparently fans are using primal instinct as a term when it when like when it when it like just in general right and i'm just like uh hello hold on a second hey guys i'm over here i've been saying this for years now <gasps> what the hell i don't know what to tell you i literally was just like as soon as i heard this man say that i was like yo i know i know people are not about to act like that's the first that oh no 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 but hey then again you know there are a lot of uh folks out there that like to theorize and do their own uh do their own context clues and understanding of certain things that take place and whatnot they can put you know other people can put two to two together we're not the only ones you know there are you know as as much as as much as there are fans that really stress us out with you know with bl blatant ignorance and just you know very inside the box type of thinking there are, there are definitely those out there that can be on the same wavelength as us which is which is nice so it it's was just a, it was rare nice that's thing. that's the only thing about it like i don't know some people either just don't care enough or just dig too deep into like things that don't even make sense like some people you know like really come up with something or hear some type of theory and instead of trying to figure out like well how you know how can this you know how can we put two and two together they're just like oh that's it <laughs> yeah like now when i think the context that uh, that fans are apparently saying are using this term i think they're trying to or no I'm, i i think they're they're saying that towards vegeta's new form like they're 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 alluding that he's gonna have like his his john's about to be called primal instinct and i'm like that wouldn't even ah. make sense you said it wouldn't no yeah destructive instinct maybe i think they should just not even bother with the whole instinct like stop trying to use the instinct term like like it, it don't relate it to goku you know like he he's I'm, like but i mean why wouldn't you though <laughs> yeah well <laughs> it's easy to do yeah but you know like no like stop <laughs> no you're right you're right because just like man i i see goku and he's like okay like you're on your path vegeta clearly on a, his whole separate path trying to still connect the two like they're on the same stuff it's almost silly in a way because i'm just like nah bro like save that for broly man he's the one that deserves that name for his true mastered instinct uh you know which is definitely us on primal stuff because the he was the, he's been he has been the most he's been the most closest character to really like utilize the saiyan potential to you know levels that i don't even think yeah no definitely not i don't think it's de like that levels that goku nor vegeta have brought out themselves like when you think about it they have straight up like Ha they have been training under other sources of power god key 
now this like destructive stuff you know now you know the ultra instinct is essentially you know the state of the angels really so broly literally is the only one out here right now that is essentially forcing a power out that would would require uh the blood waves of a full moon oh no i'm serious like he he's straight up like we saw it in the movie he he literally broke the the shackles that the freaking thing around his neck that was supposed to suppress him as best as possible of course that didn't work you can't hold a man's true primal rage especially when you got all that power so you know like it just it, it that itself just makes way too much sense that that john needs to go to broly he is solely using his primal instincts because that is he, he that is what he is he's a freaking he is an, an insane overpowered ape that i'm sure if paragus never cut his tail off dude i'm telling you we would have seen this guy make history but i mean he already did because they he, he confirmed it bro i don't know how many episodes i gotta say this i could literally talk to talk about broly at all times but he legit it was confirmed that he was using the power of a great ape while maintaining his humanoid form so had he had the tail man's literally would have been a super saiyan 4 yeah so he need they need to put respect on broly they need to get, let him have that name like straight up because honestly i feel like that is the true super saiyan right there like no gold hair no no none of that like it is this is like that is the saiyan freaking power right there the true super saiyan no you're definitely right and we've been over that a couple times before because that's definitely like you know the official version of it yeah definitely more than a couple times i'll tell you that much yeah <laughs> so but yeah outside of that guys that's pretty much that's pretty much it so if you guys are interested in getting any of your comments questions concern answered here on the full power podcast um feel free outside of the youtube comments i mean of course we're gonna always check the youtube comments if you're watching or listening uh via the youtube channel but if you're one of our Spotify, Apple, Google, or wherever you are listening to the audio, audio only versions, um, you can actually reach out via Gmail, which is fullpowerpod at gmail.com. Someone took Full Power Podcast. Couldn't believe it. So our official email and is they took Full Ask Power FPP. Is, wait, what? And they took Ask FPP. Yes, they also took that one as well. So. And I, I tried to see if I maybe had set those up and just forgot the passwords. And the uh, the phone number that was associated was definitely not mine. And it was not Kai's. So I'm nope. like, okay, well, somebody's an asshole that's out there. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, all comments, questions, concerns, possible topic, ideas you might want to hear us talk about. Reach out, full power pod at gmail.com and uh i guess some last bit of news that i guess i forgot to bring up earlier japan had released the dragon ball super volume 16 and the dragon ball or or, sorry super dragon ball heroes big bang mission volume 2 in japan like i said they went on sale at the time of this recording and like I like I think I mentioned this earlier or not to, not today but in the in a in an earlier episode that the official Dragon Ball website will put out um, like news on new products that <laughs> as if it's available to the world. I mean technically you can buy them buy the Japanese versions, but if you're you know a listener 
in the US and you and you go to their site and you're like, oh, it's on sale. I'm like, nah, like in Japan, yeah, but not in America <laughs> or anywhere else in the world for that matter. So shout out to the official Dragon Ball website. <laughs> Is there, an, uh, is there anything else that you might want to uh, end with, Kai? No, not that I can think of. We uh, we went over everything we discussed, like, at, like towards the beginning, you know, mm -hmm. the CGI stuff. So I think we're good. Solid. All right, fellas. Well, again, fullpowerpod at gmail.com. If you want any questions, comments, concerns addressed here on the Full Power Podcast, uh, it's been your boy Uch, and Kai. Make sure you guys are checking out all the social media as always. Make sure you guys take care of yourselves. May the power protect keep it locked loaded right here on this podcast. Stay safe, stay clean, stay inside. We'll see you guys next time.